Okay, yes, today I am admitting a terrible addiction. I am addicted to these electronic component parts kits. I have tried to curb my addiction. Amazon is not helping. Um, but, you know, there are some practical reasons why you might want to collect these if you're building your electronic supplies for your workbench, even if it's a very tiny one, such as mine. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the kits I've gotten and some of the benefits of, of you know, essentially having these on hand and how that all works. Ah, so, <laughs> yeah, it's out of control. I admit it. I'm an electric parts component order. The shame. Okay, this is the part of the video where I'm going to first, um, you know, obviously I've admitted my problem, but I am going to talk a little bit about some of the benefits of these electronic kits and essentially how I got this addiction in the first place and um, <clears throat> how you can kind of use um, some of these kits to really kind of build up your electronic uh, workbench or lab if you're... Um, uh, of that um, skill level um, but um, you know I, I have to defend it a little bit because it's not completely insane <laughs> although I probably have um, uh, gone to new levels um, so I, I'm trying to rein in the budget a little bit um, looking at my addiction and um, I will recognize the good parts of that and we'll kind of go over a little bit of, of that first thing I'll just mention in general um, Whenever you get these little kits, uh, there's there's a lot of um, you know good stuff out there. Sometimes you have to search for them. You might be looking for uh, you know a certain thing like a vet, uh, voltage regulator, and you get like you know one or two components, and you know they're for sale. That's fine. But if you can find the same thing essentially for a little bit more, and you get a lot more of them, so that you have different parts, um, that's kind of essentially how my addiction started. And um, for practical purposes I mean now I have all these voltage regulators as an example um, so you know there there is a, a practical side to that if you're building up your electronic components I've been out of electronics for a number of years now so I had practically nothing um, I had to kind of you know rebuild my my store uh, of electronic components so that's a little bit in my defense as to you know where that came from but one of the things I, I did initially is um, I went out um, to Jameco, a Jameco company. Um, I actually didn't even buy it from them. I bought it from uh, Amazon. Uh, so I buy a lot of stuff. And, you know, these bags here are ones that I, I purchased separately. But essentially, a lot of the components that I just kind of put in my, my regular you know, drawers here, um, you know, came directly from... Uh, of Jameco grab bag so you you get these grab bags and they're just full of all sorts of assorted stuff this is this is probably more indicative of what was in that you have um, different kind of uh, connectors and all sorts of things um, that maybe you might use in the future maybe you won't um, had other components as well a lot of jacks and everything a lot of that stuff in there uh, a lot of obscure, um, oops, sorry, I'm shaking the camera. A lot of obscure uh, connectors, um, so I just kind of put them in a, in a bin, but this did allow me to kind of, you know, start up some of my bins. Um, let's see, they had all sorts of um, you know, crystals and coils. So I have plenty of those. If I want to just experiment with something and I don't really care, uh, you know, if I fry a component, I, you know, I want to avoid that whenever possible. But, uh, you know, I have some things I can just kind of experiment with. So that's good in that respect. Um, you know, all sorts of little things um, that I ended up um, getting. They had a, a ton in, in those kits. 
of LEDs. So I since bought some additional ones you see in the bags. Those are ones that I bought and I, I bought another kit for LEDs that I'll show you. But if you just wanted to, you know, have something to play around with and plug up something to light up something, um, these are ones where you can work with it and not worry so much about uh, you know, blowing anything up. Um, in the same Jameco grab bag kit, um, did have a few ICs. You know, there's a few in here that I bought since then. Um, but yeah, I did have numerous ICs. I don't know what condition they are. They all just came from uh, the company, just kind of loose. Um, it's an anti-static bag they were in initially. Um, probably just you know, shocks something by touching it there. So, you know, I have uh, now a drawer for inter integrated circuits, so I can kind of mess around with those as I need to. Um, a lot of different um, capacitors uh, and, you know, resistors, all sorts of things like that. So that's something I actually bought. But all sorts of just, you know, odd electronic um, components that you can kind of just you know, start your store bins with. So if you want to experiment with things. Uh, they had a bunch of potentiometers in there, so I have some of those. Those come in handy for various um, uh, experiments that you're working on, and uh, just little odds and ends of uh, things that um, you know, I, I kind of collected from the Jameco grab bag. So that was kind of how I initially started. Um, it was just kind of reintroducing myself um, into electronic um, uh, component collection and uh, just kind of get me started all sorts of little things I could um, kind of put in my my parts bin and just have ready so that was one way so we'll get into some of the proper kits so that grab bag was just giant you spend it hours but it's kind of fun sorting through and finding all sorts of odd little components uh, just you know loose stuff uh, these are all you know resistors and things that I I pulled out of their diodes uh, you know that had some power transistors all the stuff from that one kit so it gave me hours of enjoyment gave me something to fill in my parts bin I've actually used some of these for little experiments where I just need to grab a resistor so grab one and went to town um, so yeah that was that was how I started but there's proper kits that will show you as well one more thing about that uh, Jameco grab bag, um, you know, this is a power supply I bought, but this one here is one that was inspired by that Jameco grab bag because it had, I think it had the 12 volt buck converter in it. So it inspired me to kind of make a power supply, but I didn't want to just have the 12 volt. I also wanted to have a five volt. So I went ahead and made this a uh, project. There's a separate video I did. That was all inspired by that Jameco grab bag because it had a full buck converter board uh, in it. Uh, it was all, you know, in anti-static um, wrapping and everything, but it was within the kit. So that was kind of cool because uh, I ended up making a project from it. So you never know what you find in a grab bag. Diode kits. Okay, this one, this is an example of something I, I needed a diode for a particular circuit. So... I, I knew I needed a certain type. This is the you know typical kind of electronics uh, parts kit that you'd get. Um, in this particular case, it's got a label on the inside um, so you can't see what the components are until you open up the lid. That's fine. Always suggest um, you really need to have these kind of labels. Uh, make Get a label machine so you have um, something you can put on the backs of these because you never know how they're going to come labeled. Uh, now this particular one, uh, of course has you know all these different uh, diodes and it gives you all the values here this is um, kind of an example of one that i made a mistake on i think i bought um, uh, two of these um, kits and if you notice i have three here one of them actually had multiple the same values but you know different packs so it had two packs were, that were exactly the same so i kind of consider that a bit of a waste because, you know, do I really need that many diodes <clears throat> of a particular type? The other one I, I read properly when I was ordering it, and it just, you know, had the other types um, that I needed. So I essentially have two kits, one double kit, 
uh, of diodes that I can use in these various projects. So um, these kits are great when they have, of course, the use labels. So they can tell you which compartment you're looking at, just to, of course, for quick and easy reference. Uh, that does help a lot. So another thing with the uh, kits in general, some of them are going to have better latches than others. You'll sometimes see some uh, comments um, on those um, you know, reviews on Amazon or other services if they have reviews, reliable. Um, but um, yeah, so you'll see some of them are going to be put in really cheap cases. This is not a bad case, so that's not too bad. So for capacitors, um, this is an example of one of the kits that comes with the values on the outside, kind of makes it nice and handy. Um, you know, on the flip side though, you open it up and you don't have that reference, you're going to have to keep doing it that way. Kind of like it more this way, honestly, um, as a uh, electronic parts um, aficionado. Um, but uh, yeah, it gives you multiple values, so if you're looking to uh, do a certain uh, circuit, then you have this. this is, these are multi-layer monolithic ceramics, so label them as such. I uh, got um, actually this this kit came with uh, you know three different boxes, um, multiple values, so it kind of covers a wide range. That's important when purchasing these kits. Um, these are ceramic capacitors, so I got an extra kit uh, just for that. This one has a little floating label here. That's fine. Um, and, you know, I have multiple values there as well. So it gives you a different kind of uh, capacitor. A pretty decent case, a little light on that. But, you know, these kinds of things work well. This is a, a kit that I started with years ago. Um, kind of messed around with it a little bit, but uh, you know, it's been this a version 1.0, I think they're on version 3.0 now. So some of these are somewhat dated. Um, these are sensor, sensor modules um, that will work with um, Arduinos and other microcontrollers. Um, it's a really nice kit. Uh, this is from a, a Lego. I believe that's how you pronounce it. And um, it actually has this nice little fold out here that tells you what all the different sensor modules do. So that was actually kind of cool. Um, they have um, an online uh, resource for each of these. Uh, for this version, I was not quick enough and I didn't save it. Um, this is kind of a blast from the past, so some of these are a little dated, but they're still useful um, and you know, it can still be messed around with. So it's got all sorts of things from uh, you know, uh, photoresistors, infrared, um, ultrasonic, uh, little joysticks, um, everything you can think of, flame detectors. So it, it's got a good amount of um, sensors, and these are good little kits to get. Obviously, they have, you know, even uh, Ardu Arduino kits or even, you know, Raspberry Pi kits out there as well, too, where you can get. Um, all the components and then a lot of a little electronic components to uh, play around with, uh, with experimenting with that. Um, you know, if you're just starting out and you don't want to have uh, parts addiction, that might be the best way to go because that's easily justifiable and no one can blame you for that. It's not like an addiction. It's just one kit. It's got all the stuff that you need. So that's good. Um, so yeah, that was, that's, that's one way to uh, you know, kind of collect a, a lot of different components at once, um, and it's guilt-free. Of all the things that um, give a part order that uh, addictive glow of satisfaction are semiconductor, uh, you know, parts, chips um, that you collect. So here's some of the ones we have. This is kind of an example of, it looks like a kit, it's really not, it's just basically uh, 10 pieces of, you know, in this particular case, it's a MOSFET. So there's a certain MOSFET that I needed and it just kind of comes in this little box. So it kind of looks like a kit, but it, you know, I don't know if you can call it a kit if it only has one type of component. Um, bulk um, item of something that's more commonly used, that's totally fine. So uh, instead of just having one or two for the project, I have multiple ones for future projects, so that's nice. Uh, voltage regulators, these are always handy to have. 
Um, you know, this particular kit comes with a number of values. Um, this one's kind of nice. It's got the label on the outside and on the inside. So either way, uh, it's perfect because you can tell, you know, which particular component you're looking for. Um, so that's, that was kind of a nice um, little bonus on that one. Um, power transistors. Um, always try to label these. Some of them will have these, uh, you know, different um, kind of labels on there. Some of them have things on the outside you can't get off. I kind of hate that. Um, but in this case, um, had a little descriptive description of that and has, um, you know, the different components that are inside as well, too. So, you know, these are all the power transistors um, that I just wanted to have uh, available. Um, well, more MOSFET transistors. This one, unlike the other little box of them, has multiple values. Um, I didn't have that other particular one. That's kind of the issue with some of these kits. So you might have all these, but it's missing the one that you really need or one that you realize you need for something else. So you may have to buy additional stuff like that. But this way I do have um, a good amount of um, MOSFET uh, transistors uh, you know, at the ready. So um, ICs are always fun to have. Uh, speaking as a uh, addicted person to these kits, um, you know, this one has a nice little assortment. Uh, these are, you know, not, um, uh, you know, some of them are a little older. Uh, some are, you know, pretty straightforward. You got, I think there's even a, yeah, 555 timer on here, which um, is uh, very common. But one of the most successful ICs out there, actually, if you look at some of the stats. So, um, you know, it's good to have um, these on hand uh, for various projects. A uh, nice little label on the outside as well. So that worked out good. Uh, this is a CMOS Logic IC kit. 4000 series. These are um, not used for um, too many. Th well, they're used for uh, some things uh, these days, but I wanted to have an assortment. Uh, this is kind of the chips from my childhood. So I wanted to have uh, a good assortment of these on hand for experimentation. Um, so it's, it's a nice assortment of those. Transistors, of course, you got to have transistors. This one has our, our labels on the outside. You have to kind of correlate that to what you have on the inside, but I've already used this uh, multiple times uh, on various projects, so it was very handy. Uh, this one labeled um, 74HC XX Series Logic Chips. So uh, sometimes they're a little weird to, this one's a little weird to get open. Oh, okay, I'm on the wrong side. Yeah, this one I had to label on the other side because just of logistics of the label and everything. But, you know, it comes in an anti-static um, foam. Um, actually, I had some different uh, chips that I had um, that I wanted to add to here. So since I already had the kit, I just added the extra chips that I did have on hand that I wanted to keep. They were purchased separately. But um, since I have the kit and I had a little room, I thought I'd just sneak them in there. So you'll find yourself doing that sometimes. Um, let's see, I think this is, I got two, and this is probably one of the downsides of kits. You really should read those reviews pretty well. This one was actually not bad. This um, is an alligator clip uh, sorted um, kit. So, you know, you, I, I've made a few cables, of course, and everything as I'm going through. And, um, you know, this is really handy to have. Uh, gives you uh, these different types of them this one actually was pretty good bought another one not so good because i didn't read the reviews and i read a couple of them and some of them said hey you know you get what you pay for if you hear you get what you pay for and it's cheap careful <laughs> so that one was really bad you would end up um, clipping the alligator clip in the in the and the jaws would just go like that so it was really junk so be careful read those reviews um, yeah, I avoided uh, getting this one for the longest time. Um, these are the diode kits uh, that I did get. Uh, I did get some three millimeters and five millimeters. The reason for that is, you know, as you saw from the James Go kit, I just had so many lying around. But this is just a nice, real clean assortment. 
um, and um, just kind of mention that uh, you know here's here's the different values um, you know 20 milliamps uh, really good quality they're actually really bright so I was happy I got this because you know it's good to have these on hand LEDs um, are very useful in your electronic projects so that's good to have and of course the five millimeters same exact kit they just had two different kits so being the parts hoarder that I am I ordered both of them so I could have both the three millimeters and the five millimeters and um, actually it worked out good because these are you know just as bright uh, very nice and it's really handy to have you know these available and just you know grab them and go and then you're off to the races for your particular project so yeah those were good kits just when you thought i was out of kits no way um hey uh this this particular one here uh crystal oscillators i realized um, um yeah i have uh that grab bag um box of them but i didn't have um i didn't have a easily assorted uh, precise values of the various you know um, oscillator uh, values I would need the, the Hertz me megahertz um, so this was kind of uh, a good purchase I thought um, just to have those uh, crystal oscillators on hand that worked out well um, this is SMD diode triode and MOSFETs oh my um, this particular kit is kind of a little funky um in that uh oh yeah this is um this is an smd kit surface mount device kit and um this is um i had one project where there was um, one transistor that blew up so bad that um you know it, it's an old goodwill project uh, a goodwill um electronic uh you know a picture frame that I got for eight bucks and I was plugging in to see if it worked and it blew out one of the transistors and the hole blew right out of it so I was going to repair that um, and I needed a transistor and I, ha I could barely figure out which one it was so I figured I would get a nice assortment of them since I'm a hoarder and I was going to start uh, you know maybe a collection of those SMD uh, devices and of course that sent me on a whole other tangent that is not healthy <laughs> for my addiction um i was looking at yeah i got this one because it had you know various components i figured you know i should have some surface mount um you know devices on here and um yeah i i did get um just a small amount uh left in that jameco grab bag um, of items I think there was uh, one strip like this of little ICs and then I can't know some of you can't even see they're so small um, I even had to put a piece of tape on this to keep the smallest ones from going through it because some some of these SMDs these surface mount devices um, whether it be resistors capacitors um, transistors they can be so small you could inhale them so um, but yeah that starts me down a new rabbit hole this is kind of where i realized i might have an issue <laughs> so um i'm not going to go the full route because as i started checking out um i did get you know some of these books here this is one where uh it sent me a bunch of um transistors i even got some blank books with some of these pages so i could fill these up um but I, i've got all these different components um these are pretty much the same size um but there's they are there are different sizes as i'm finding out so not only would you have to collect th these are like so small you could literally inhale them by mistake um these are you know different um yeah this is smd capacitor capacitor kit so i'm going to try to avoid going down this route i don't do a lot of smd work i was just kind of curious because i wanted to see if i could fix that other device but as I look at it, all these there's like maybe ten different, ten or twelve different uh, sizes for the SMDs, and boy, that's just a rabbit hole, isn't it? You could just buy all these different components, but you got to buy it in ten different sizes if you want a complete kit. So 
I'm going to avoid that addiction because that's just a little too much for me. But um, yeah, at least I have some of these components on hand for that. Uh, this particular one here is electrolytic capacitors. Um, just get a little note on there for myself. So these can, of course, always come in handy. Um, it gives you, of course, the value here, but uh, electrolytic capacitors are very common in many electronic uh, projects. So that was real handy. So this is one where, you know, kit is actually pretty good, but, you know, the case is not so good. I think I read a couple of uh, reviews, but the assortment was so good. I just kind of forgave that, put a little tape on it. Oop. But that's, you're, you're going to get stuff like that where, you know, it's kind of a, a little more expensive for them to give you the all the different components. So they give you that. Now, hopefully, I haven't had any cases where these kits, um, have had bad components, um, but I have heard of some people, you know, getting different uh, components that weren't so good. Usually they were in single parts where they were trying to get a particular thing and, um, you know, they, they get something that's doctored or not a true part, but the kits usually are pretty reliable because um, they're just buying them in bulk and, and um, should be okay. As you uh, build up your electronic component supplies, you are you know, making various projects, you're going to realize you're missing some mechanical parts too. So, um, you know, kits like this can be very helpful because they give you a nice little assortment. You don't necessarily know if you're going to need, uh, in this case, this is uh, for nylon standoffs. Um, you, you don't know if you're going to need a standoff that doesn't conduct electricity for safety purposes or just for lightness. Um, you might want to have uh, these, but then maybe you really need it that size instead of that size um, because of, you know, what you end up with. So you don't know. Um, so kits like this kind of help, uh, at least gives you a little assortment of items that you can figure out what's best for your particular project. Um, other types of things that are mechanical in nature, but used for electronics might be a screw terminal block connector. I this is not something you need every day, but these kind actually advertise that you can kind of connect them together. Um, so you can, they, they can slide together. So that was kind of nice. And I was thinking of that for a couple of potential applications. So I thought I would get some. Uh, did I absolutely need this? It's probably more part of the addiction part, but um, I know I do have it when the need does arise. Um, this is my dip switch um, collection here. So it gave me a little nice assortment of uh, dip switches so I could use it in various projects. I, I didn't have a specific need at that point, but it was fairly inexpensive. So trying to get free shipping on, on Amazon, I thought, eh, why not? Let's add this. I'm sure I'm going to use it for something and I, I'm sure I will. Um, so. Yeah, you know, you're, I'm giving a little window into my addiction here. Um, this is really handy to have. These are my breadboard jumper wires kit. So these are already pre-done. Now, can you make your own and save yourself money? Sure, you can. But um, these were already done in certain sizes and ready to insert into your breadboard. Uh, it's got some cables there as well, too. So it was a nice assortment. I try to keep it. Uh, pretty neat and clean, even though I'm grabbing from it every now and then. Um, but you know, that's that's more of a time saver kit, so it wasn't something absolutely necessary. But I didn't have a lot of guilt on that one uh, because it comes in very handy. Um, this is an example of I needed one grommet. <laughs> okay, yes, I am. I, I do have an addiction. I needed one grommet grommet uh, rubber grommet to have a cable come out of my power supply that i mentioned a little bit earlier and uh, i was making the power supply i needed uh, a rubber grommet to kind of protect the cord coming out so there was a kit available and it has all sorts of things from uh, and it was actually good that i had this because i started off with one grommet and then i needed to i realized i needed to make the hole bigger so i filing that down and everything and by the time I I got that done I needed a little bigger size so because I had this kit I just swapped out the old one that fit the small hole that wouldn't fit the power cord 
and I put in the bigger one and everything was fine. So I put the other one back here. So ready for use on something else that needs a small one. Now I have some that are ridiculously big I can't imagine using, but you never know. So um, it, it is good to have these for practical purposes. In that case, um, it did work out well. Uh, this is a nice handy little kit. It's actually a pretty quality uh, shrink wrap. Uh, this is my shrink wrap kit. So uh, it comes in these little small tubes that are already pre-cut. So perfect for you to use to protect those um, wire connections. Um, you don't want to have necessarily bare wires out there, even though it's sitting in a box, perhaps. Um, just a good idea to make it nice and clean. And these particular ones are, are really nice because they've got kind of a um, heat um, heat activated glue inside so it makes it a little sticky on the outside but it gives you a really firm grip so and it comes in different colors so I've used this numerous times um, and this is one where the case is a little wonky on the clips but so get in there you're gonna find that every now and then but the you know the value of it was great otherwise um, this is uh, banana plugs and sockets kit um, it was okay um, nothing to write home about the components this is one of those you get what you pay for uh, comments I didn't quite read but it's not too bad I mean they're they're usable uh, these got kind of a you know funky little uh, enclosure where you put them on here and it ends up uh, to be something like that so it works um, and yeah, it's fairly clean uh, not you know one not not the very best quality but enough for general purposes so something like that worked and now I have banana clip collection ready um, you know for whenever I need it so sometimes you're going to need those um, physical uh, kits to really kind of um, you know get your collection together some additional ones that I had are like my IC socket kit Let's see I've got too many parts I'm running out of room um, this is a uh, really handy to have if you're working with uh, ICs uh, it has um, multiple values as you can see so you know, they're they're pretty good quality not too shabby um, so it'll work for my purposes even got little ones for like five 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 timers uh, I tend to kind of like that uh, to have sockets so if you know you have an issue it's easy to swap something out um, wire connectors are a big thing particularly in robotics you got um, different wires floating from different parts of the robot so this is a little kit um, I don't know if I've really mastered using these but um, you know th that can be handy to have uh, a kit like that um, I'm going to be doing some stuff um, well let me go to this one first because it's kind of related to the other one this is um, a prime example actually <laughs> of not paying attention to what you're ordering do these look similar hmm, do they look the same that's because they are the same I ordered the same thing twice without realizing it. So um, you got to be careful about that. Pay attention to what you're doing is if you feed your addiction for these um, electronic park kits, just make sure you haven't bought it again. So I felt really bad about that afterwards. But this one I did not duplicate. This is um, a USB connector kit and I am planning on using some USB connections uh, within my dream robot pod project and maybe some other ones as well too this is kind of nice it came with um, various kinds of USB connectors um, you know, from you know, different kinds of uh, sockets so it gives me a little flexibility um, you know even uh, USB uh, C's and um, it was it was a nice uh, kit to have I haven't used it yet which again I didn't really have a need for it at the time I just knew that eventually I was going to be needing it so you know that just kind of goes to show you how things go when you're addicted and or a woman uh, can't have too many resistors so uh, in this case this is one of the first um, kits I got I think it's uh, 
what was the guy's name? Uh, Joe likes electronics or something like that. Um, he has some pretty good kits. Um, uh, in this case, it was um, cardboard box. So um, it's not bad. It's got a pretty good assortment of them. It's got your um, color code chart here. Uh, it's got another handy little color code chart here as well, too. And if you notice, um, you know, they're all nicely labeled. There's multiple values and each bag, but it's just really easy to sort through. Um, uh, this has been a real handy kit. I've used um, a lot of the resistors from this, 5%, um, you know, 5% uh, you know, resistors, um, the tolerance resistors, this 400 piece kit, it was anywhere from 10 ohms up to, you know, one mega ohm and not bad, but it just wasn't as satisfying being in a cardboard box. So. Um, I did opt later on to upgrade a little bit um, to this particular kit. This one is actually the same kind of fashion where um, you have them all nicely, neatly organized. Um, it's got them well labeled. Uh, it's probably got, um, it's got a good amount of uh, assortment of them. These are uh, germanium. Uh, let's see, how much does it have? It doesn't say. It had a lot of them, so it's, it's, it's got a pretty good amount. But the main thing is that uh, it had a really good assortment of different values, and that's what you really want uh, if you're putzing around electronics. So um, that was really handy. Uh, for some reason, I like the plastic boxes better. So Joe, I really liked your kit, but you know, you might want to—I don't know—it just seems more satisfying, more secure. Um, and uh, in this case, you know, it's, it's well organized. This particular one's bigger, so kind of, you know, helps along those lines as well, too. Um, capacitors, of course, are another great thing that you're going to need from time to time. Um, you know, these are metalized polyester film capacitors, so had a pretty good assortment. I was trying to get a certain um, value for one of the projects I was doing. I think this one kind of came close. It didn't actually have the one I needed, but in looking at it, it just looked like a good overall kit. So uh, again, the addiction component kicked in and I just got it. Um, this is um, a kit for polyester film capacitors. Uh, I try to label those so that you can see the distinction. Um, obviously, they have a different look um, to them and a nice little chart on top with all the different uh, values. So. Uh, gives me, you know, a good assortment um, you know, from the lower values all the way up to the very highest values. So that was, a, I think, another good purchase because uh, capacitors are a standard component. Uh, these are, you know, they're not surface mount, but I don't do a lot of surface mount stuff. I do more prototyping and putzing around. So um, that worked out pretty good. All right, now as you get into your addiction of buying things, what you may find is that you buy um, not necessarily the parts, but you might uh, end up buying some components, um, but also some module boards. So I ended up um, kind of making my own little kits, um, so to speak. I, I bought some of these plastic boxes that are empty that had different dividers. Um, and then I made my own little uh, containers um, so that as I got something, it would just come like in, uh, you know, a little anti-static bag. Um, I could start putting them in these little boxes and I, I guess it kind of makes it like a kit, <laughs> so, uh, but a self-created kit. So in this case, um, you know, this is an ambient light sensor. This is a digital uh, light sensor, um, pressure sensors, temp sensors, uh, ohms stress sensors. These are, you know, set my sensor box. This is a clock timer um, memory. Uh, this is a GPS module. So those are ready for experimentation and hopefully I can find them fairly easily. Again, using another one of these uh, little boxes and of course labeling up everything voltage sensor current sensor um, humidity sensor with the part number uh, we've got um, uh, this um, gyro module sensors temp sensors barometer sensors um, 
little microphones, um, all kind of contained within this. These particular ones, they can connect together. So this one didn't really, wasn't part of a series, so I just used those as feet. Um, and then we get into, you know, different uh, components. Uh, this is buck converters. So I had some, some buck converters that I uh, purchased that uh, were just little modules. So I made a little box for those. Um, of course, um, you do have your microcontroller boards. Uh, this is a real important one to have. Uh, and they're, they're nice, you know, they, they come open like this. Um, you can, if the board is big enough, you can just stick it right in there. In this particular case, we've got a Ciduino uh, Xiao. Um, we've got an ESP32 S2 microcontroller, uh, ESP8266 microcontroller development board. Uh, I've got a Pico, Raspberry Pi Pico microcontroller in there. So uh, additional boards, of course, you know, can, you can never have too many microcontrollers, right? So uh, we've got an Arduino Nano clones over here. Uh, we've got um, uh, another clone here, another clone here. Um, and this is a, you know, uh, Arduino Mini, Pro Mini clone. So, you know, this one's a little messed up there. Um, and they're, they're ready and available. These are detachable. They, they come off from each other. But if I want to just kind of keep them together because they're all modules, uh, it's a nice little system. They just kind of connect in together. And then, you know, I can store them that way. Uh, certain things, I, I end up getting a, a plastic box that was a little bigger as well, too. This one is for... Um, OLED uh, displays. So I've got a couple of different ones here. I still have to experiment with, um, and that and that's maybe part of the problem of this addiction is you end up with things and you f you forget. Oh yeah, I got that one. I gotta use it. So I I take all this time and you know putting them all together and uh, don't end up using it in a project. So there's another LCD uh, display. This one I use this other case that with no dividers because just because it was so big, but it protects it. Uh, keeps it secure. This is a box um, just full of uh, sensors that I'm going to be using for the Dream Robot. Uh, it's got uh, gyroscopes, uh, heart rate. I don't know how I'm going to use that unless he's in the medical profession, but we'll see. Uh, accelerometers, um, uh, all sorts of, you know, this is bar barometric uh, pressure. Um, and this is a time of flight distance uh, sensor. And then uh, you know, PIR, PIR uh, infrared uh, sensors here. So uh, just kind of putting those together. And of course, the Arduino Uno has its own box, of course. Um, but, you know, I, I actually have been starting using these for various things. Uh, like this is um, my Ar Arduino Mega with um, the Movi um, speech recognition board. I did a video on that one. Um, so I just kind of put this aside uh, just to keep it nice and safe as I'm experimenting. Uh, just take it out when I want to get into that. Um, some things like the Arduino. This one is normally out on the Arduino Uno, but uh, this is his official box for whenever he needs to be stored away. Um, but he gets a lot of use. So anyway, yeah, that, that's, that's a little more about um, you know, the, the module part of my they're not really kits, but essentially they, they, you know, same addiction. You're buying electronic you know, modules in this case or boards, uh, and you got to have a place to put them. And this just makes it nice and convenient and protects them. And then it makes them well labeled because, you know, sometimes you look at something and that, well, what was that again? <laughs> so the, this is very helpful to have them all labeled and protected. So you've seen the addiction part. Um, and uh, yeah, I've, I've confessed a lot of things in this video. So, um, you know, I, I will know I, I am trying to control myself a little better lately. Um, I, you know, we have some uh, budget issues we just want to be more secure about. So, um, I'm, and I think really, I've, I think I've got enough parts to do what I need to do. And I need to spend more time not just categorizing these and putting these together, but actually getting into the fun projects that all of these are for. So uh, I'm going to do more of that and uh, less ordering because I, I think I've built up a pretty good stock of stuff. 
Uh, I may need a few little components uh, here and there, but for the most part, I think I've built up a, a good base of you know, components and modules and uh, all hardware, everything that I'm going to need. I didn't even show you a lot of the hardware parts um, that uh, I, I've gotten, uh, you know, header pins, uh, trimmer potentiometers, connectors, sleeves, spade terminals, header pins, washers, heat sinks. Uh, you can buy kits for practically anything. And, um, you know, that's uh, that just makes it more addictive, particularly if you're really trying to build up your store of electronics. I'm going to be moving my electronics um, bench from this little small bench to something a little bit bigger. So hopefully I'll have a little more room to spread out and I hope that doesn't give me any ideas. But um, I am going to try to curb my addiction a little bit. Um, but I, I think I, I've kind of made a case for why it's not you know, too far out if, if you are an electronic hobbyist or electronics uh, is your thing you're doing it professionally even for prototyping you're going to need some of these and i've seen some professionals who say they get them too that made me feel a little better but um you know that that uh, can be a great way to kind of build up your electronic uh, storehouse so that you know when you need to build something when you need to prototype something uh if something is broken and you need a particular part uh, and you want to try and fix it then you have it on hand so this has been my confession video. Um, let me know in the comments if you have a similar addiction. Please don't mock me because I'm very sensitive, but <laughs> um, you know, uh, we'll hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, you know, get some other people who say, or let me know they have the same addiction and maybe they had some of the same positive uh, comments uh, so far as building your stockpile and, and how it may have helped you. That will be helpful for me. Um, you know, I am going to try and stop purchasing so much and sorry, Jeff Bezos, your interest payment on the yacht may be a little late. Um, well, I don't want to spend that much, but anyway, um, hope you've liked the video. Um, hope you've learned a little bit about the insights into an electronic parts order. Um, maybe you can avoid it if you don't really need to get this crazy. Uh, if you are into electronics and it's um, something that you can do, you know, just you can collect these little by little. Some of them are relatively inexpensive. Some get a little more pricey, um, but it kind of helps you to build up your, you know, lex electronic um, you know, parts um, uh, components over time, and that way, you, if you need to do something, you got it available. So hopefully, um, this video is not going to end up to be too embarrassing for myself because I am admitting my addiction. Um, but uh, thank you for watching and uh, if you do like the content and want to see uh, more or want to check out some of my other videos please do that um, I always appreciate if anybody subscribes and if you can give me a thumbs up that is tremendous i really appreciate that that does encourage encourage me uh, to produce more of these videos so um, you know i'm just going to take you through as i go through my various electronic projects and admit a few things that i do uh, Range, but um, hopefully you liked the video and thank you for watching. Take care.